So I'm starting to think a little bit more about my environment, and um, I want to just get a, a, a simple texture up on the wall so that I that I you know get a sense of what my room's going to look like. And I and I just uh, took a few minutes to create just a real flat yellow, a light yellow texture that I use for the paint on my walls. And I did turn on the diffusion channel, and the diffusion I have the mix strength very low, and I added noise. noise, there it is, uh, instead of a texture. And on the noise, I just chose colors that were, that were kind of similar to my paint color. And, and what that did is just kind of create this noisy texture pattern on uh, the diffusion layer. And if I bump up the strength, you'll see a little bit more clearly. Um, this is the, the diffusion layer. And what the diffusion layer is going to do is it's going to affect the way that light starts to reflect off the wall. Um, so I'll just throw this texture on. I'm going to throw it on my wall and I'll give that a quick render. And what that does is it creates a bit of noise. If you, if you look at the, um, the texture and it might be a little hard to see in the video, it might look noisy anyway because of the compression. But what it does is just let, it makes the surface look a little, uh, a little imprecise. Uh, if you look at paint across the wall as a roller covers the wall in paint, it's going to leave little, little bumps and dots and, and, and irregular surfaces. And that light is going to uh, scatter off the wall and make it look like it has um, a little bit of a texture to it. Um, so that's just really kind of reinforcing the texture of this wall. So, and I can always change the color later. I just wanted to get something inside my environment um, that, that, would, that would really kind of help, you know, fully realize the environment that I'm looking in. I'll also throw in some, some real simple baseboards. And so, so what I'll do is I'll get started by taking a cube. And uh, I'll, I'll make it the right size and the right shape, the right proportion. I'll just kind of, you know, throw a, a real simple board into the equation. And uh, I'll make, you know, kind of this, this, I'll call this, uh, this will be my trim color. Uh, so any of the trim in the room will receive this white texture. I'll turn the specular off and uh, I'll, I'll take that, that trim color and throw it on the cube. And so now I have a real simple baseboard. I may even... Uh, this will probably be kind of a glossy paint, so I'll turn the reflection on just a little bit so it's starting to reflect uh, some of the environment back into the equation. I'll give that a real quick test render. So yeah, now I, now I have a little bit more inside my scene. I threw a real simple wood texture from the content browser on the floor. Maybe I'll throw a rug or some you know carpet down. But maybe I also want to cut a hole in my wall. And there's a couple of different ways that we can do this, but I think the easiest way is going to be just take a cube and use that same technique that we used last time around uh, for a bool when we created the, the nuts and bolts for uh, we created the nuts and bolts for, for the, for the uh, lamp here I could just put a cube where I think I want that window to be cut through and I'll just intersect that with the wall so I'll call this um, that's just my cutout and if I can find my wall there's my wall I'm going to take, line those two up together so they're at the same level of the hierarchy. I have the wall and the cutout, and what I'll do is I'll jump back in and grab this bool object, and I'll throw both of those objects into the bool. So now I have this window, and the nice thing about this, it being non-destructive, is if I take that cutout, I can slide that around to really kind of change the position of my window and just get that lined up right where I want it, and that looks pretty good. That's going to be right about where I want it. In fact, I'll kind of come out here and, and, oops, I'll come out here and I'll look through my window and uh, maybe I'll line that up or maybe I'll move the desk around. So now I have uh, this window. And of course, I could build, you know, a little lattice work, maybe some panes as well. I'll build a, a real quick frame here so it doesn't look like it's just a hole stuck in the wall. I'll build a, a, a window sill and I'll do that just with, you know, basic techniques of arranging cubes in space and I'll throw some trim around this window so it makes a little more sense And if I'm feeling really ambitious uh, maybe I'll try to even throw some curtains up in the space but now that I have this hole cut out in the wall I'll add a little bit of light to the equation and so I'm slowly layering light in and this time around I'm going to use an area light and an area light is a uh, probably the most sophisticated kind of light uh, that we're going to see inside Cinema 4D and, we, and uh, we do pay a price in terms of render times now an area light um, is going to show up by default as this rectangular plane, and it has a direction to it. It's pointing down the z-axis, and in fact, it's it, it's pointing both in the negative z and positive z. And what I'll do is I'll just move this outside 
I'll make it a little bit bigger and I'll rotate it so that it's pointing back into my scene here. There we go. Maybe I'll point it down just a little bit. And uh, right out of the box, I should start to get some illumination spilling in uh, from the window. And what I'll do is I'll take this light and I'll be really heavy handed about this for now. And I'll make it kind of a kind of a cold blue. So it'll be kind of like some moonlight here. And I'll give that a quick render and, 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 and see what I have. Now, uh, the rest of my overall scene is pretty intensely lit at this point. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I have this work light in the scene. And if I take the work light out of the equation, it, it might get uh, pretty dark pretty fast. So let me undo that. I could leave my work light inside the scene and uh, I, I could just mute this light inside the environment. If I look really closely over here, there's a couple of bullets that are just to the left of the green check mark. Now, if we turn off the check mark and we give that a quick render, that will temporarily turn off our light uh, and, and that'll solve our problem. But what we could also do is that we have the stoplight system and the stoplight system works like this. The, the top bullet for this object has to do with the preview. And what this means is, is this object visible in the preview? And if I click that bullet, it turns it green and that forces it to be visible in, in the preview. If I click it again, it turns red and that forces it so that it's turned off in the preview. The bottom bullet has to do with the rendering. So right now, even though this is suppressed inside the preview, when I render, I still get the effects of that light. If I use the bottom bullet, I can force it to be on or I can turn it off. So I have the illumination inside my scene, but when I render, I'm getting just the effects of the desk lamp and the light, um, my area light that's inside the scene. So I'm gonna turn, for now, I'll just turn soft shadows on uh, with my, my area light and uh, I'll go in and I'll play with some of these values, but I, I just wanna get this light to cast some shadows and maybe, um, Let's see what we got here. There we go. That's kind of the effect that I'm, I'm looking for. Now I'm getting some, some kind of strange results. I'm getting some really intense light coming in. Um, and, and I'll continue to play with some of these values and I'll throw some more lights inside the scene. But I have the effect that I want of, I'm looking out a window and I have some light spilling in uh, and I'll really continue to push that, uh, that forward. Now the other thing that I want to start to consider is I want to start to hang some posters on my wall. And I'll do that simply by taking a cube object, tap the S key and zoom in, and I'll flatten this out. And I'll make this the proper proportion for a poster. And I'll just kind of slide that back onto the wall. Wait until it disappears and I'll pull it forward a little bit. And I'll look at that at the size and the scale of the rest of the, the, rest of the room. So I'll make this much bigger. And so this will be a poster object and now at this point, all I have to do is create a texture and I'll call this, um, I'll call this poster one until I get a better name for it. And on the color channel, what I'll do is I'll load a graphic that I have inside my texture folder. I have this Saturn poster and I'll load that as a texture and I'll drag and drop that onto my poster object. So maybe this is an illustration that I've created or a design that I've created for another class. And I could just really quickly kind of texture that and I'll give that a quick render inside my scene. And of course I can't see it because my work light has been turned off. I don't really want to point my, uh, my desk lamp at it now, but that just, that just goes to show that um, the illumination in my scene is not exactly what I want. I have this big area light that's, that's dumping a whole bunch of light into the room, but it's just kind of coming through the window. Um, so, I'm going to introduce, maybe I'll just turn my work light back on for now. I'll take the intensity way down and I'll give that a render. So now I have some posters hanging on the wall. I have, I have some light that's spilling in from outside and, and, I'll, and I'll try to emulate some kind of a moonlight here uh, in just a bit. So maybe I'll just, just for the sake of the demo, I'll make this really intensely blue. Now we're getting a, a, you know, a shift towards the blue. I can see it bouncing off the baseboard here. Um, but we're really going to start to see the effects of this when we start playing with some of uh, the render settings. And I can always go into my render settings. And I don't want to spend too much time setting up my lighting because the minute that I turn on global illumination, 
So I'm gonna go into the render settings and I'll do that by clicking on this right render option. And if I click on the effects tab, I'm looking for global illumination. And inside global illumination, right out of the box by default, when we give that a render, it's gonna calculate um, all of the bounced light inside the room. Uh, it's, it's going to um, bump up the lighting. So now we have bounced light within this room. Um, and, and it's really, the, the, the light's taking a more complex kind of path uh, through this environment. And we're starting to get very different results with our lighting. So now that we've turned on global illumination, we can really start to play with uh, some of the values in global illumination. And we can play with some of the general settings. And we have these different GI uh, modes. And we have you know, the, these IR and QMC. And, and basically, this is kind of an indoor render uh, setup, whether it's for still image or camera. There's QMC, which is more appropriate for kind of outdoor uh, uh, style of lighting, or we can combine the two. And I'll just uh, choose this IR QMC, and so we get some uh, slightly noisier results layered in with uh, more of an accurate lighting model. And so I'll just kind of play around with some of these values. So um, um, my overall environment is, is way over illuminated. I want a much more dynamic lighting setup. And so I'll go back into my work light and take that way down and give that a render and see what, what, uh, see what my environment looks like. So I'm gonna continue to tweak and play with uh, my, my, light, my lighting setup, and you can see, wow, I got a, you know, really dramatic results now um, coming in. There, there, there's, you know, things are, are really muted at this point. I didn't wanna go that dark with it, so I'll, I'll bump it up a bit, but I'm gonna continue to think about what's going on inside my environment. I want to fully realize the environment. I want to think about other things that I could introduce into the equation. Um, at this point, it's okay if I go into uh, the content browser. And from the content browser, if I discover that, oh, there's, there's a, uh, some desk furniture in here and, and uh, oh, there's a wastebasket, these are the kinds of things that at this point you can start to integrate into your scene uh, to make it feel like uh, there, there's, there's a lot more objects. So if I were to go into the content browser, into the visualize tab, into objects, you'll see that there's a lot of household items. We're gonna continue to model stuff, uh, but at this point it's okay to dig in and say, okay, well, I really want a chair, I want a desk chair uh, for my scene. And so I'll look and see what's available inside, you know, chairs, and uh, you know, there's some chairs in here that I could throw into the equation. Um, and that's okay to start to populate this environment. Now, in the next presentation, we're gonna continue to model some stuff. We'll model a coffee mug and we'll slap a decal on it. Uh, and, and, and then we'll, we'll take a look at really kind of uh, finalizing this scene with some other details. And, uh, but we'll catch up, continue to push this forward, think about the environment and all the details, things like baseboard, walls, windows, other kinds of things based on the techniques that you've learned so far that you can create to put on your desktop. Uh, as I mentioned in the next presentation, we'll make a coffee mug uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll take another pass at our environment to make sure that, that we're getting all the stuff that we need. And just as a, as a reminder, if you go into uh, the lesson folder, just remember that there's a project rubric here and there's a, a real simple checklist here that reminds you of the things that you need to successfully complete this project. And there is a project requirement list here that includes things like desk, pen, paper, and so on. So make sure that you review that. We'll catch up in the next presentation.